he's delivering a constitutionally required address. Right. Uh, and so, in a sense, she's ripping up a document that exists under the Constitution. Well, wait, wait, wait. So, to those of you um, who are following the U.S. Um, Senate trials on the impeachment articles of Donald Trump, um, I'm sure by now you've heard that he was acquitted of both impeachment articles, and it's a great day in America. It would have been a very sorrowful day if Trump had been defeated. Um, not exactly defeated, but it's more like the truth was defeated. What was morally right was defeated. It proved one thing to me that is extremely disturbing and something I hadn't thought of before the vote occurred, and that was that the president could actually be toppled by that Senate vote. And I know it seems silly to bring up that point, but really, I never thought the vote would be that close. It was extremely close. It was only about four or five senators that would have taken to swing their votes, and Trump would have been dishonorably expelled from office after all his hard work. Now, to those of you who have been following, the impeachment article was an absolute sham. Um, with no evidence and nothing but hearsay to back it up uh, from vague people that had nothing to do with the case whatsoever, only in passing, uh, and never could have had direct evidence to support their claims. And what Schiff has done, Schiff has spun this entire web of lies. You've heard it before, and I know maybe I repeat it, whatever, but I'm saying there's a there's something deeper involved and that is in our time the truth matters the truth is not partisan the truth is not supposed to be skewed because of somebody who got paid off with money or with favors or with favors in the future and the pretense for power Schiff and Pelosi should receive a criminal trial for crimes committed against America in this moment. And I hope for that. I hope that Trump someday, not Trump himself, because Trump is a very busy man, but the Senate or Congress itself, when the speakers, pardon me, when, 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 the, um, when Congress is taken back by the Republicans, some things must be done. And there is a gaping hole in the confidence of Congress and even the Senate, in my opinion, when it comes to voting on issues that used to be about morals, about right and wrong and about true justice. Now it's more about influence and power and money. I have no doubt in my mind that Schiff and Pelosi at their back there's somebody big, somebody powerful, somebody extremely wealthy, rich and so on and influential uh, because to get them to betray America in this way is a very deep and treasonous crime but they must have counted on the fact that they could get away with it. So that's what gives them courage. If this had been done 60 years ago, I have a feeling they'd be in jail for the rest of their lives. Because the way that the Constitution is, and the way that people were at that time, there he is, Trump acquitted, uh, it's a very severe penalty to, be, to commit treason against America, especially within itself. Uh, so within the government levels itself, I mean. Those people are required to be at a higher standard, and they're not. So, I'm reminded of this case I remember under George Bush uh, during the 9-11 attacks when George Bush was out of the country and another gentleman was 
required to take power in order to stabilize the nation as the president was away. And <clears throat> you might remember his name, but you might not. The case was this individual used that pretense to try to grab power, and a lot of people criticized him for it. I believe he was a former Secretary of State. And I see something similar happening now in our time with Pelosi and with Schiff, that these people could have the potential to topple this great president of the United States illegally, in fact, without uh, a crime. And it worries me a great deal because these people won't ever stop unless they're removed from office. So I wonder, and I've always wondered since I've watched the trials, what kind of criminal investigation and prosecution could be made um, against Pelosi and Schiff and Nadler, um, the Bidens and so on. Because as far as I'm concerned, Trump made a tactical error when he attacked Biden in that way. He underestimated the amount of influence and power that Biden actually possessed. Um, guilty, though Biden is, and Hunter Biden, they're both guilty. Um, it was the wrong time to make an assault on an opponent like that. Trump should have bided his time and perhaps ignored that case for them for the time being and handle it sometime in the future but nevertheless things always happen for a reason and we cannot surmise you know like this like that could have worked out so now it's done but uh, Trump Trump was in extreme danger during this vote and it made me worried a great deal about America, about the degree of political corruption, uh, because the Senate is not supposed to vote on something like that uh, with bias and with a partisan motivation, uh, which they did. The Democrats overwhelmingly voted against Trump, 48 votes and 47 votes against, I believe it was, and that should never have happened, given the amount of evidence, given the testimony, given the fact that these people are supposed to be educated in law um, and have an intimate knowledge of the law and how it functions. Um, and then to listen to the testimony of Schiff, whom, if you heard it, it's like when Trudeau speaks, he fills the, the air with words that have no meaning, no basis in, in, in reality. And you can say they're mentally sick. The way that they speak is, is, is not coherent and based in some kind of fantasy ideals. Now, you give them credit because... The way they put together the speech, it sounds beautiful. But if you actually scrutinize it, you'll see that there is a deep hypocrisy and maljudgment uh, that breaks the glamour, so to speak. So anybody that knows anything knows that these people are just lying um, excessively. So... It's really disturbing to me that the Senate voted that many votes against Trump, despite the evidence, despite testimony of witnesses, despite the fact the case was obviously biased and partisan, um, is shameful for me. The Democrat senators uh, and even Mitt Romney voting against uh, Trump for, I think... What was it? It wasn't abuse of power. It was uh, the, the, the first impeachment charge. Uh, no, I think it was abuse of power. And then he voted against him. Uh, sorry, for him. Uh, for obstruction of Congress. That's right. 
Uh, Mitt Romney is dishonorable in that way, but uh, I don't want to talk too much about him. He's he's cast his vote, and so there will be a reckoning for him later, I suppose, by Trump. But maybe nothing will happen. It doesn't matter. He's still a senator. But what I want to direct you to is Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz was a former adversary of Trump during the Republican uh, primaries and Ted Cruz was humiliated by Trump. Ted Cruz was Trump called him out on having a Canadian uh, <laughs> Canadian born citizen and shouldn't have any right to run as a president or a senator and so on. Trump tore him to shreds. And yet now Ted Cruz is one of Trump's strongest supporters. It takes a great man to admit they were wrong. And to to back an enemy, a former enemy or an adversary, um, on the moral principle. Right, it's it takes courage to admit and to be humble enough to to see the truth and to look past your own anger, your vanity, your pride, your ego, and so on. Uh, but Ted Cruz does it. Ted Cruz de defends the president because that's the right thing to do at this this at right now. It, it's it's the right thing to do because the president is doing his best to defend America and her interests, and it's easy to say something like that. But really, in every action, Trump is looking out for Americans, and I don't care if that sounds cliche or not. It's the truth. So the fact that the Democrats were so heartless, or so corrupt that they were unwilling to see and they were unwilling to vote for him is a very telling sign of the deep corruption within the Democrat Party in Congress and within the Senate and my conclusion is this the Democrat Party should pay a hefty penalty for their crimes in this moment and that penalty should be that during the election many of them should be replaced um, and their responsibility and power removed from them because and I hope the American people feel the same because it's 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 a joke how could they be partisan in this moment that's that's the real crime extremely biased or bought off or both or whatever but Schiff should never have that kind of power to attempt to command the Senate and attempt to command and Pelosi as well. Pelosi and Schiff should never have that kind of power to to corrupt the Senate and corrupt Congress in that way against Trump. Um, because if they had any moral grounding, and if you had watched the trials, I mean, it's obvious that Schiff and Nadler and the lot of them didn't know what they were talking about. Were talking sporadically about nonsense. Uh, and trying to fill the words like any decent lying politician. And I know because we have one here as Prime Minister. So it really is something that is extremely dangerous and something that that I'm sure the Constitution itself is is well built because otherwise Trump would have been found found guilty. So I still have hope for for the the Senate, but I mean, my goodness, it was close. It was so close. Um, so, as I said before, it's a great day in America. Um, I hope Trump has victory again in the 2020 election. Um, with any luck, uh, he should. It's impossible to say within America that Trump didn't make the situation 100% better from, for everyone. Uh, in some way or another, every American has benefited from his presidency. And I, I would argue that with anyone. Uh, just because I remember the Obama years too well. And uh, even earlier years, like under Bush and so on, I mean it's a disaster. Trump has that drive in his heart because he remembers the true history of America. He was there. He watched the country go lower and lower and the prestige lost. 
uh, he still remembers the 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 old uh, gentleman politics of the Reagan era. He lived through it. Um, you know, he knows intimately how the country diminished itself by the wrong leadership and by corruption. And I feel that something pushes Trump inside because it's it's all there in his memory uh, to correct the course that America was on. And so far, he's done a bang up job. It's 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 magnificent. In comparison with the Canadian economy, the American economy has rose fifty percent. So it's um, compared to us, the, we're it's it's a joke. It's it's the Canadians had no reason to suffer in this moment except for thanks to our our prime minister for putting us in this situation. That's it. If the leadership were different, I guarantee you the times, the job losses, that wouldn't exist. Not a chance. So, And we'd have better relationships with other countries, including the U.S. But that aside, I'm deeply, deeply happy, deeply pleased that Trump is acquitted of all charges and that he can conduct his affairs uh, again without... Uh, I'm sure he lost a great deal of sleep over this stupid thing because, uh, you know, it's... Imagine being in his shoes. Imagine. You could lose your job over the will of... Let's call it a hundred people. And... I think it needs to be answered by the Americans. That's what... That's the real justice. If those people were to lose... Most of those people were to lose their jobs and be replaced by somebody else, more responsible. New blood in the Democratic Party, not this radicalized, unbalanced group that's that's currently occupying it. Uh, that would be something that would that would correct the course. But thank you so much for your time, uh, and I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, and take good care. Bye bye.